A very good evening to you, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Ambassador Benjamin Oswansa, and you are only welcome to the Power Impact Series show, proudly brought to you by the African Season Speakers Network. Yes, where we influence the next generation of Africans, and for that matter, for any young person anywhere in the world, you are warmly welcome. Yes, may I know who is online with me? Get to the chat area, let me know where you're joining me from. And let's keep the energy rolling. You know what? Because today is going to be a wonderful day. Because today we have a wonderful guest that you want to listen to over and over and over again. You know why? Because we're coming all the way from a wonderful place huh? in the world. So get ready. Don't go anywhere. Share the link. Share the feed. Let others also join and then benefit from the wisdom nuggets we are going to. Discuss on where you're going to discuss or share today. Were you here last week? If you were here last week, let me know. If you were not here last week, yeah, 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 yeah. There is something one up. We took home last week with our hashtag for the episode, last week's episode, was speaking from your heart when we dealt with public speaking and content creation. Today is another thing, it's another a level altogether. You want to witness today's episode so get the link to someone who's not yet joining us let them join us right after the break i'm going to introduce to you our speaker for today our guest for today and make your questions and get your questions ready and let's be interactive don't go anywhere stick around i'll be back to do the introduction of our guest for today Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thought and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info dot at gmail.com you can also follow us on all social media channels at abscessnet global african season speakers network influencing the next generation of africans influencing the next generation of africans that's what we stand for and that's what we want to get by bringing to you one of those speakers all around the world not just africa but anywhere in the world that want to present their topic or discussion to wonderful people like you and I watching now. Thank you so much for joining again. It's a power and persuasion. My name is Amadana Benjamin. And then to our guests for today. Ah, 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 ah. Let someone also join. Let somebody join today's episode because it's going to be a wonderful episode. And I'm ready. Right. <laughs> Our guest for today. <laughs> Joining us all the way from India. I guess it's a wonderful person that uh, wants to share with us some beautiful wisdom nuggets. We're going to talk about mental health and wellness. Now, our guest is a former senior UN official and I guess is currently the founder of Creative Expression. I guess I've done a lot of works with the UN, has done a lot of work with children, especially on mental health issues, on wellness, on being able to keep to studying and then a little bit of protection online. This wonderful person is joining us for the very first time on the Power Impact series all the way from India. Her pictures are scrolling or rolling on the screens now. Ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time on the Power Impact series show, help me welcome first time on the show no other person than Shaza Tanidia, all the way from mm, 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 India. 
How are you, Shweta? How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you so much, Benjamin. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, Namaste uh, from India to everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you from whichever part of the world you are connected to us and you're listening to us. Um, a very much warm welcome to all of you on this show. And Benjamin is definitely a very, very good host. I'm observing him for last uh, few shows. Uh, and it's really nice and an honor to be here. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you so much. So that it's so good. So good. It's good to have you here. And then, yeah, thank you so much also for following. We are so grateful to have you here on the show. Right. So I just give a little intro about you. But you know what? You are here in the studio. So we want to hear from you. Who is mm, Shelza? And that and, and viewers, before we go on, you know, you know, the meaning of her name is strong determination. So her life has been that of strong determination from birth to now. And she keeps on going. So we have her here. <laughs> We have Thank a here, a woman with a strong determination to make an impact in her world, make an impact wherever she finds herself. And um, all her life, all she's done is creating impact. And then with that determination that she has, she keeps breaking barriers to the day. So you are here. We want to find out who you are. Tell us about yourself so that we can really relate and then follow or the nuggets you're going to share with us today. You are here, so tell us about yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, if I say in one word, if I have to describe in one word, Shelsa. Shelsa is creative. Creative is my expression to express myself, who am I? And as you correctly mentioned, the meaning of my name is a person who is strongly determined highly determined so these two words determination and creative describes me very well uh, if i talk about uh, my professional journey it's been like 20 to 25 years i have been working uh, as um, while while doing my uh, studies in my college i was very much uh, determined i must say to learn and to earn <laughs> So, learn, and to <laughs> learn and earn yes so as soon as i was 18 years old i was very much uh, you know uh, kind of uh, focused that that i will not be any uh, kind of a burden on my parents anymore so i will do uh, my own earnings and i will spend my earning on my learning basically <laughs> so from there i started my journey uh, of uh, grooming myself as a as a very uh, you know strong professional and i'm really blessed that i could actually cover a lot of areas uh, during this beautiful 25 years of my professional journey it is uh, started like i started with the private sector basically and from there i got an opportunity to work with the united nations and uh, I worked with the UN almost for two decades, on and off, on and off. Uh, and that also gave me a very good opportunity to connect with people at various levels. I was also uh, deputed once uh, to work with the, with the Ministry of Health in India. Uh, and also I got an opportunity to work with NGOs, with CBOs, with communities. Uh, with private organizations, with some of the CSR initiatives in India. So it is a complete holistic kind of approach uh, which I took because I wanted to see the world and the issues and the problems, how we can address it from different angles. If I would have worked with just one of the organization, it's like, you know, grass at the other end looks very different. But when you go there, it's the same. So it's basically perception completely. And I was very much, uh, you can say, uh, willing to explore the world. Yeah. How, how things are impacting people when we see the grassroots. Yeah. 
the last mile what are their challenges so i never said no to the uh, the opportunity uh, which was challenging definitely but as i said my heart is very much connected to people uh, from a very very simple background i come from a very uh, basic uh, you know humanity roots i i carry along with me and uh, i will also like to share with you all that uh, when i started my career with the with the private sector it was a banking uh, job basically to begin with and i was doing very well being awarded at the age of 20 uh, for the kind of northern uh, region uh, telemarketing and operations and those things i remember and this is very much important to share at the age of 20 when everybody was celebrating my success of being you know the uh, the highest uh, a kind of a performer basically high performer uh, for the northern region india for american express bank we we had a a, a kind of a dsa for uh, retail banking at that time somewhere i was feeling that this is not what i'm born to do hmm. and i really wanted to find out an answer that what gives me happiness what is it because today i should be happy if i if i i am uh, acknowledged as a high performer everybody is celebrating it right. like a party yeah. why yeah. i am not happy within myself and you won't believe benjamin every time when i ask this question to myself there was one clear vision i always had i always used to see that there are people who are in pain and i used to run to them touch them and bring smiles on the faces this one vision kept on coming to me every now and then and that has actually kept me more closely attached and committed to serve uh, communities and serve humanity and this is what kept me connected to the development sector in the last 20 years so that is what shelza is all about that's what shelza is all about yes her willingness to help communities yes how quench <laughs> and that is it that's it here all right so what was all the works that you did at the new work what was all the things that you did during your time you were about over two decades the what was all the things you did was you were at the work okay so the most beautiful thing of that part if i say that allowed me to work with various un agencies first of all right. and i was enjoying my contractual kind of a, you know arrangement with different agencies that gave me an overview of different projects also i worked okay. majorly on hiv area Uh, yeah. i also worked uh, on uh, maternal and child health i worked on knowledge management uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 drug ab abuse uh, uh, program as well the drug control program as well mm -hmm. so it was actually preparing me from different aspects you know to gather a good knowledge uh, about public health uh, it also gave me an opportunity to work in the area of wash water and sanitation and hygiene and this was a kind of a csr uh, project which i worked with and it gave me an opportunity to connect very differently with women who were having sanitation issues and problems uh, which were not addressed that much because that time the swachh bharat abhiyan had just started in in our country it was clean india initiative uh, so that is also a very good opportunity which which i uh, i still you know it's very close to my heart till date that was a time when i went there and i lived with them for few days i've used to fall sick every now and then i used to take some antibiotics because the the kind of places the kind of situations the kind of conditions they were living into when i went to their level when i you know spend time with them when i lived with them then only i could understand how difficult 
their life is and the challenges of women and girls in the area of uh, you know sanitation uh, issues and then what i wrote was completely different what we can write while sitting in the ac rooms you know so so <laughs> that's you. the I difference that's the difference benjamin when we work with our heart when our heart is involved when our when our creativity is flowing that's the right kind of a outcome that we offer to the world that's a real side of us that we offer to the world that's a real side of us that we offer to the world when we get to touch base with the realities on the ground. That is when we give or offer to the world what we're supposed to do. Right, so in all this, in all these things that you encountered, that you saw, that you, you experienced, how do we blend that into what we want to talk about today, mental health and wellness? So uh, I would like to share an overall experience where I'm coming from and why this particular subject is close to my heart. Uh, I work very closely and very deeply felt connected to children basically throughout my journey in different projects. I worked on uh, one of the projects run by Clinton Foundation for diarrhea management. Uh, that gave me a very serious uh, sense of understanding that it's a very simple a thing which can be addressed with ORS and zinc, basically. But a lot of children die at the age of zero to five years just because of diarrhea. And it is preventable, which is which can be taken care of. Slowly and gradually, I got connected to the children who were living in orphanages. That kept me more connected to people and I started spending time with elder, elderly people who were abandoned, uh, you know, orphan and abandoned basically. While spending time with them and also understanding uh, the pain areas in different communities, working with sex workers and uh, the people living with HIV, the women living with HIV, the kind of st uh, stigma and discrimination they, they go through, that actually opened, opened the doors of my heart in a very different manner. It was not just the work after that. It was a very different commitment to work, you know, and, and, and to change something for them. And then from there, I took an individual initiative uh, of working with the women, uh, vulnerable uh, women from vulnerable communities living with HIV. Some of them are hidden sex workers. They don't want to share their uh, status because definitely, you know, they will have to be uh, uh, like facing stigma and discrimination in their regular life. And then I came up uh, with uh, a kind of a expression, I must say, where through colors and through art, I started healing them. Wow. And if uh, if you tell anybody normally uh, that colors are therapeutic, let's let's use this. Nobody will take it seriously. At all, because I mean, I mean, not, you know, at, all. Me <laughs> not at all. How, not how at all. Not at all. Exactly. You know what? When we talk about our expression, Benjamin. The kind of colors, the kind of patterns we draw, the kind of pictures people draw. So through art, any form of art, a person's mental state comes uh, at surface. So when we talk about, actually, when we talk about mental health, we cannot restrict it to any age group. Whether you talk about children, whether you talk about adolescent, whether you talk about uh, elderly people or you talk about youth, there is no single category who is not uh, affected by mental health. Uh, I have read uh, some WHO's uh, uh, reports on mental health. It says that almost one third of our population has somewhere affected and impacted by mental health disorders, a different kind of mental health disorder. It can be anxiety, it can be 
uh, you know, personality disorder, it can be depression, it can be uh, schizophrenia. There are several variations, basically, and different levels of mental uh, illness that people may have unknowingly, which is unaddressed. And and it can be it can be identified at a very very initial stage as a parent if we talk to our child if we are if we are observant enough the symptoms and the signs can be observed at a very initial stage and that is why i i mentioned about creativity if you have heard of uh, when when uh, when a child is small uh, he or she is given a lot of kind of, you know, coloring books, activities uh, to allow the child to, to express, you know. Right. Because when we right. express, we actually unblock uh, our real side, our real potential and our mental and it is good for our, our mental development, right? Right. So when, a, when for a child we talk about that this is good for our mental health, why do we forget uh, being an elder? Mm. The, the same, it is actually the root. It is the root of being human. That really, that's how it heals. That's how it helps. And uh, when I met some of the people in, in orphan ages, there were childhood traumas. There were abuse. Some of the some of the girls were sexual abuse victims, okay. and 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 then they lose their mental balance okay. after you know. So when I was uh, going through these kind of experiences, it was not at all easy to to you know to remain untouched. This actually shakes you up and wakes you up and you feel like talking about this, that yes, this is a serious uh, situation, which is very much unaddressed. And I'll share one more uh, important thing with you all. Uh, I wrote, uh, I, I'm very fond of writing poetries, basically. That's my creative expression. So I write poetries, I write books, I do paintings, and I do a little bit of uh, 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 coaster art to keep our Indian ancient arts alive. Uh, so I do uh, various forms of uh, arts on small coasters, basically. And through my poetry, uh, I could actually uh, express. And uh, one of my poetry was observed on, on the Mental Health Day last year by the UN uh, headquarters, which was 3rd October uh, 22. So again, I would say that this is what we, how we, observe and how we absorb things and how we actually reflect it to the world. So my creative expression helped me to help people to address some of the issues. Uh, we have an NGO in India called Cry and one of my poetry was a face of their campaign uh, which is periods no shame. Wow. Well, let, let me just give shout out to those who join us online. So let me know if you are here with me, get to the chat area, let me know who is online with you, where you're joining us from, and how the discussion is going so far for you. Right, so if you are tuning in, I say it's very critical discussion. Thank you so much for joining. And then my main man, Cola Nut, says, mental health indeed starts from childhood. And it's important that children be given a chance to express themselves any way they can through play and drawing. Thank you so much, Kola. And Kola is into a lot of uh, philanthropical activities, doing a lot of things with children. So I think Kola resonates with what you're talking about and what he's sharing with us. He perfectly understands you. And he says, congrats on your poem being taken by the United Nations. Please share your poem. <laughs> she will share the poem. Don't worry, Kola. She will, he wants um, Shelza to share the poem with us. Thank you so much. Defin so, uh, so definitely. We will drop the link. Yeah, Yo, you can drop a link. Yes, um, we can take it up from there and then we can we can share it. We can read it. We can cite it and try to look like you. Right, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for sharing with us this intro. Yeah, so just a quick a quick one how how 
the colors. You see, sometimes when you go to children, children hospital or children clinics, you get to find some funny, funny colors, funny paintings. Sometimes you really don't understand why do we have this kind of paintings here and all those things. But uh, you, you, you made mention of a point that um, healing with colors. How do you do that? Or how is that being done? I mean, I want to understand it, how therapeutic it is to use colors. How do you do that? <laughs> yes. See, when we when we talk about mental health, uh, if you understand the key factors which are definitely contributing more seriously is, uh, you know, lack of self care basically. Then we we can see the lack of social support, like someone is isolated uh, or uh, emotionally not available. You know, those kind of things and stress. And I'm just talking about factors. We'll come to the colors uh, to address this. Emotional, uh, you know, there's a imbalance, basically. Then we talk about the unhealthy habits. Everything, these are all contributing uh, to the mental health issues, basically. And when we talk about healing through colors, anyone who's using dark, like black, more, more darker shades, basically. Right. So darker shades reflects a kind of a pain. More blue reflect emotions. Right. That so much of emotion, and if uh, and the kind of you know pictures, the kind of paintings, the kind of shapes, the kind of uh, you know the kind of expression that that come that comes out. It reflects the mental state. The more green, the more yellow are the positive colors. And and also, when we, if you have, uh, if you have noticed, when we uh, do some painting, it reflects how observant we are, how mindful we are, how present we are in our surroundings, or the kind of imagination that is coming uh, on on paper, on canvas. That. It reflects our inner world to the outer world. And that is what I believe that uh, when we allow our creativity, this is one form uh, through paintings, through colors. Music is another, uh, you know, a very good way of allowing your creativity, allowing your energy to flow. And the more we restrict, the more kind of energy blocks we create. And the more we allow it freely flow, the more abundance uh, we invite of happiness and you know freedom. So that's how it relates. Wow, that's I know it's a very relates. different. It's a very different kind of a uh, aspect of looking at mental health, but it really, really, uh, you know, it's interconnected. It's completely interconnected, and there are many research and many studies. Uh, who has actually, uh, you know, endorsed it. If right. you get a chance to uh, go deeper, you may find uh, some, uh, you know, some doctors or some researchers sharing this, that pharma and non-pharma, uh, like non-pharmacological uh, kind of approach, uh, they take while addressing the mental health issues in, in any, any person. So it's not only the medical approach that works completely, and it's not only the, the non-medical uh, approach uh, heals a person, but it's a good combination of hand in hand. It's not just the medicines, and if it's not just the uh, uh, kind of, a, you know, a kind of a healing touch. So both the things are required. Medical intervention is definitely required. Uh, evidence-based, looking at uh, the kind of situation the person is going through and how far the damage has been already done, how it has to be reversed. But my way of looking at it, that love is the most powerful energy in the universe, which is freely available. And when we have children at our home, when we have, uh, you know, uh, the elderly people or anybody in our family where we can, we acknowledge that something is not right, if you observe that someone is, is withdrawing himself or herself, we should immediately interact. We should communicate. But in our, in our uh, 
current scenario the social media has actually taken up a lot of space you know uh, my daughter was preparing for one of her uh, speech school a few days ago and uh, i observed uh, her uh, reciting one line that that social media has impacted our personal relations you know it has connected us to the world but it has disconnected to the person you know sitting next to us and a person who should be loved more so this is also contributing majorly to the mental health you're on mute you're on mute it's benjamin good. Yeah. I, I just went on mute because I was just soaking in what that you're telling us or what that you share with us. I do want to make a noise to interrupt you. Right. If you're joining us, you welcome to the Power Impact Series show where today we are with Chelsea all the way from India, giving us a wonderful interpretation of color code. And this is for you. Colano says you really need to write a book on child mental health because these color codes and interpretations I have I've only heard once elsewhere and wasn't as expansive as you just did. It explains why blue <laughs> is the color for many social media platforms because blue is a social color and we more comfortable interacting with blue. Also, why some telcos use red love is red and care is pink thanks so much mother thank you so much Kola. thank you for that i'm i'm sure she's doing that already or she has a book she's going to talk to us about thank you so much dr Theo plus taki joining us all the way from dallas texas usa he says i'm watching you from dallas thank you so much and he says thank mental you. health issue is a big deal now especially under this world economic distress. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me know who is online with me. Just hit me in the chat area. Let me know who is joining me online. If you have any questions for Chelsea, this is the time you can bring it up. And then whilst we move on with our discussion, she can pick it up for you. Right. So, yes, you, you, you mentioned that um, when you see children isolating themselves, this is the time for you to step in. Now, what about the ones that you don't really see it? You don't, you don't really recognize it at an early stage. By the time you realize it has actually escalated to a high point. How do you do that? You know, in some, some of the schools, you don't have a smaller size class numbers that the teacher is able to really focus on each student, you have a lot of students in there. So sometimes it's a bit difficult for the teacher to realize this. How, how do you then go about that? How do you identify or get to see that this child is actually crawling into his own shell or is withdrawing so that you can step in to find out and then do further investigation to find out what really is wrong with this child? I mean, get your experience that you've had working with children on this level? Uh, so, uh, Benjamin, what I understand is, um, as we're talking about self-care is very much important. If you see that the child is not getting enough sleep, the child is not uh, eating properly, not taking the balanced diet, forget about the balanced diet, not even eating properly. And... Uh, there is no regular exercise kind of a you know pattern uh, being followed lethargic this definitely shows a kind of a sign which a parent or anybody who should who is a caretaker should actually see notice that this uh, this is like a kind of a small age group child you can understand and also um, if the if the child is not happily interacting withdrawing himself or herself. These are some of the signs which can help you to identify at a very initial stage. If a, if someone is very, uh, you know, open in talking and all of a sudden, if you see some sort of behavior change, it, we should not neglect it at all. 
not at all and uh, one more thing i would like to share benjamin normally children uh, i'm talking about the young children uh, before the adolescent age they touch so in that age group if you see when children come from school from the any activity when they go out and play when they come back they are like flooded and loaded with the energy which they want to share and at that time if they don't get that kind of uh, you know the compassionate listening the kind of touch that they want uh, the kind of ear uh, uh, to their stories and everything it is very much important if they are not getting that kind of a support trust me slowly and gradually they withdraw that's that's a very very initial sign which we can understand that something is bothering them something is uh, you know is is definitely happening uh, which he or may uh, she may not be uh, happy about so a good heart to heart conversation is very much needed very much needed that what's my uh, observation and understanding and experience uh, is and when we talk about the adolescent age group that's a time where hormones are changing when a uh, lot of uh, you know different kind of uh, thoughts are coming love is in the air for them is happening and <laughs> and you know a kind of a relationship issue starts uh, pouring and uh, children as we talk about the cyber security in social media as well so children they think uh, that they can isolate themselves and they can do some activities which they may delete so and this is also a time of bullying cyber bullying happening uh, bullying is happening at the school uh, level as well among friends as well there are some sort of uh, peer pressures on them as well so these kind of changes are coming in their life at that time this is definitely very much important for uh, elderly people for their parents uh, for their teachers for their caretakers to observe uh, what is happening it's not basically not a kind of a micromanagement i would say because micromanagement will also contribute to the mental stress <laughs> so that balance is required how much of management we are doing uh, which is not seen as micromanagement by by that adolescent child basically so that heart to heart conversation that connect is very much needed that support is very much needed that love and that caringness that nurturingness is needed to a limit uh, that uh, you know sometimes uh, the the youth uh, the youngsters they say that it's like too much of caring too much of being motherly i go to my son's school and uh, i have i will share it with you for sure benjamin he was going on a school trip he was going on a school trip it is just i think one or two years ago right before the uh, the covid happened uh, he had a, a school trip and before saying bye to him i just hugged him and he said mama i am standing in my school so i said oh my <laughs> god <laughs> so he said i'm grown up i am a big boy now so i said okay so that means i have to express but differently so right. during my own journey of being a mother from my own motherhood experiences i also learned that okay with the age it's a different expression it's a different way of handling and right. uh, to keep them happy to keep them chirpy to keep them eating well to keep them talking to you and it's not that always we go to talk to them but we need to create an environment where they come and talk to us with that right. confidence with that trust with that love with that openness and with that courage that even if they do anything wrong we have a kind of a you know a a safe space when a person feels safe i am safe i am safe is a feeling that actually gives you mental balance when you feel that i am not safe when the fear arises from there i i believe that situations uh, you know starts getting into the negative zone i hope you agree with me i i i perfectly agree with you thank you you need a mental balance and then hey you you, you need to express your creativity on different levels because yes the child was 3 years some time ago your way of expressing love and talking 
to that child because <laughs> when that child is around six years. And that is what we're talking about, how we express our way and our feelings to the children and to be able to understand them and um, be able to adjust and help when they are going off the track, especially when they are withdrawing so we can naturally get things out of them and be able to help the corrective measures at the early stage. Thank you so much. This is powerful. And thank you so much for those that are joining us online. I'm really appreciative of all that you're doing. Thank you for the likes, the comments, and then the shares that are going on because we need to put this to other people elsewhere. Right? Don't go anywhere. Stick around. I'll be back shortly after this. Need a spark to kickstart your innovation? Looking for thoughts and talks to get things moving? Wondering how to navigate a future full of change and uncertainty? With the eye-opening stories of digital disruption, extreme customer centricity, organizational innovation and global shift, our collective of speakers, MCs and moderators will shift your perspective. Meet our speakers. For booking and interviews, contact us on 0246-054092 or send us a mail info.afsesnet at gmail.com. You can also follow us on all social media channels at AfsesNet Global, African Season Speakers Network, influencing the next generation of Africans. Influencing the next generation of Africans, that's what we seek to do, and that's all we're doing here. And today we are here on the Power Impact Series show with the sales app, Tanija all the way from India, and the founder of Creative Expression. So, how, how should your expressions towards the child be creative? How creative should one when expressing their thoughts, when they're expressing their, their, their observations about the child? How should that be done? You made mention of uh, the drawings, the colors, and all that in the initial um, presentation. But how should that be done? How should the creative expression be done or be given to children to be able to let them open up and share with you? How do you do that? Since you are the founder of Creative Expression, you want to know how that can be done. <laughs> you want to tell us how that can be done so we can also learn from it. Definitely. Uh, though uh, though uh, under Creative Expression, we have a lot of uh, initiatives uh, planned. One I mentioned about the women and girls uh, who are from vulnerable uh, communities and marginalized communities. So one is that. Another one is definitely I have a very strong focus on children. Again, related to mental health. For this, uh, it's a kind of a workshops and specially designed uh, sessions uh, for the children uh, that we are going to take forward as uh, in, in a very playful environment and definitely uh, understanding them through colors. What kind of colors they pick up, they choose, they use, also express what is going in their mind, what is happening, uh, the kind of pictures that they draw. If you see uh, children drawing guns, war situations, you know, which, and also I would like to mention, Benjamin, this, in this current scenario, children have an access, actually over access to social media. So they, uh, they see and uh, they get an exposure to many things which are beyond their age years. You know, many times it happens that, that, that uh, there are certain content which is uh, not applicable or not appropriate to their age. But they do get an access to it somehow. And they, you know, that, that has an impact on their mind. So what exactly they are observing, what they are absorbing and what they are reflecting can definitely be understood through these kind of uh, workshops. Very small, very uh, short because children, they don't, uh, they have that energy, you know, they can't sit for so long. So it has to be a very playful, uh, very uh, interactive kind of a sessions with them to understand what is going on. Sometimes it, it happens that when I talk to these small kids and it's like uh, a very uh, open heart to heart, you know, discussion. They actually reflect many things. Uh, unfortunately, 
sometimes the family is going through certain you know phases in life uh if it's a broken family if it is uh, so i would from this through this channel i would also like to share one uh, key observation which i had in the last few years is many times parents you know they split it definitely impacts child's mental health not only mental health but emotional health psychologically in many ways but that doesn't mean that uh, together is a solution because i have also seen those cases where people are staying together but actually not together it also impacts it also impacts and it is not that the child is not observing they yeah. do and they feel the energy in the house and they are not happy child at all irrespective of having mother and father under under the same roof but they are not happy so it is it is not a mantra of staying together means happy family or happy child or a happy you know mind or a happy whatever no and sometimes children do understand that their parents were not compatible so they are staying in different houses but children have access to both the parents so what i am trying to say is that as parent definitely we should keep a check on ourselves what we are giving to them are we just creating an environment which is false or we are giving them happiness means happiness so through certain activities and just through interaction some kids i observed who were not at all uh, opening up initially but later on they were chatterbox because they felt comfortable they felt a comfort zone and then they talked about endlessly about the toys about the colors that they love about the dresses about the food about the places everything which means that the child is not a kind of a silent child is not unhappy child but he or she need the comfort zone to open up so every child is different every person is different every person has a unique gift that's what i strongly believe and if we are not respecting or not identifying our unique uh, gifts that we have we are not able to give our unique expression to the world that's what i really really believe and somewhere somewhere it's a lack i also would like to share one of the incidents from my only my life while i was working uh, like for long hours basically and uh, i used to send my children off to school and by the time i used to come my daughter who was 4 or 5 years of age at that time many times she was asleep i used to pick my children from my parents place my daughter was like almost half asleep or almost slept so i used to you know carry her on my shoulder and go to home so i'm not getting time spent with her then there was a phase when i was extensively traveling according to me i was sharing and uh, you know caring and i was loving i was doing everything but there was a day when uh, my daughter she was very touchy very touchy i didn't know what what happened to her for everything she was crying for everything she was crying i thought she's cranky or what is happening and that day i learned a very big lesson actually a very big lesson of life uh, i said if something is bothering you uh, something is hurting you you are unwell what is it she said mama i don't know but i feel like crying so i said please express more and she said i think this is lack of love lack of your love and i hugged her and you know i really learned that day that we can express our love in our own manner by giving everything by facilitating all you know what is required through materialistic uh, everything but that touch of you know a mother to the child 
and being together spending time together eating a meal together and why i'm talking all this benjamin because this all contributes to mental health at all levels all levels this is very closely i have seen and i have observed and i i strongly believe that half of our illness half of the you know diseases and illnesses that people go through if a person is loved if the person is supported by the family by the friends you know and uh, by the loved ones whichever way it is possible they recover fast right right true. they back bounce in a very uh, unbelievable situations the recovery is very much fast because that kind of a message goes to your mind no and if a person if a person is hospitalized or person is not feeling well and he or she is also picking up that kind of energy that you know nobody is there to care that much that person will definitely deteriorate right whereas who is yes who is loved who is well taken care of who has somebody next to hold the hand i believe in that energy i believe in that energy i've seen it very very closely and this is one key message i want to give to the world that love is the most powerful energy in the universe be compassionate be kind be generous and be human please that's very very important i i have been a part of a committee uh, at a workplace uh, where we were talking about cultural you know cultural differences cultural changes a lot of things were happening and that was also an exposure uh, to to actually understand what was affecting people's mental health at workplace when it is a toxic kind of an environment and people are working continue working there because they will lose the job and the the money that is helping them to run the house is actually critical yeah. and a few days ago uh, i wrote an article on mental health very boldly i said what i wanted to is 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 basically yes very 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 courageously i i did mention about it that people who are you know who actually who are toxic basically let me be very honest that people who are manipulative who are toxic who are micromanaging i think somewhere they they themselves are are in pain something is there in their roots that has made them like this and they are further giving the pain to others that is not just impacting the other person's mental health but sooner or later their own mental health will definitely be affected and impacted because they are, you know we always say uh, that we can pour what we have so what you have filled your cup with that is the only thing you can pour so if your your own cup is filled with negativity is filled with toxicity is filled with all kind of uh, bulliness what what that person is going to pour the same thing uh, to the other person which means it's not mental health is not uh, an area to give advice to others but also to do some sort of self reflection some sort of self ref ref uh, reflection is required very much required do i need to accept my negative areas and work on it as a person as a human because we do see this happening at a family level at a community level at every level and you won't believe benjamin after that post i received so many messages and so many calls from people telling me uh, like there was a mother who called me her daughter uh, is is not comfortable to go and play because she is being bullied by other children in the playground near their home 
so this is happening in the neighborhood a mother cannot go and you know and and support the child all the time so this is a kind of a bullying happening in the play area then we see workplace issues i received a call from uh, from a person who was 40 years plus and he said that he has a lot of health issues because of the toxic environment he's working uh, in so i i told him i said please take a right decision and a wise decision then why then again the the concern is job which means somewhere we are giving space and i suggested him i suggested him that uh, what is one thing that you are very fond of what is one thing that you love to do and then he said oh yes this is what i have not done uh, for ages so i said see you have missed your own creative expression that can give you happiness that can give you air that can give you oxygen you are not doing something which gives you happiness so you have filled your day with work only and your responsibilities only and your commitments only but that one thing that gives you happiness is missing the one thing that keeps you happy or brings you happiness in life is missing i just have to push this thumb up for a okay. bit so it's this from sarza tanija is it love is the most powerful energy in the world yeah it's because that and you can pour what you don't have inside you bring out what you have inside so if you feel with bitterness you going to pour bitterness if you feel bullied you going to pour bitterness if you feel anger you going to pour out thank you so much for sharing this beautiful nuggets with us right so before we we, we let you come in with your last words that you want to share with us um please get ready with your hashtag for today's episode you know what we do we always have a hashtag for the day's episode so please start sending in your hashtag let's compare notes let's say let's see if maybe our, all our hashtags are telling or if we have different hashtags so that we can share it with ourselves so keep pushing your hashtags in and if you've not introduced yourself let us know who is on that's a sure and then uh, we can also give you some shout outs and welcome you to join us well right. so before your your final words we want to find out right um do you have any upcoming event do you have anything you're doing do you have something you 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 coming about doing with um, creative expressions and then again how can people get to you what are your social media handles or your pages that people can follow and then uh, keep on getting this wonderful wisdom nuggets from you so you can share it with us so how this can get to know definitely uh, the very first thing uh, that is uh, being planned is a, is a very small workshop to understand the creative expression and people who are interested to identify their own creative expression first of all so i will be conducting an online uh, session and those who are interested uh, can send me a message can connect to me and uh, let's be in our own comfort zone in our own safe space with the lots of energy with lots of positivity with lots of happiness and connecting with heart which is more important which is really important uh, as an uh, a kind of a missing a uh, link in our community uh, these days so i will announce my first online workshop very soon anybody who is interested who wants to explore his or her own creative expression and people who are already you know they have identified they have identified that one unique uh, expression of their own please feel free to share it Uh, on our uh, during our workshop that is being planned very soon and thank you so much so in this world of technology in this world of uh, common things that are happening i am trying to do something which we are lacking which we are lacking that is to connect to ourselves first 
and connect with humanity with a human heart and give that gift that god has given you that universe has given you your own creative expression share it with the world we all have a very limited time on this planet we don't know for how long so love yourself and spread positivity all around for everybody's good mental health wow <laughs> Right, Kola says, yeah, we dwell too much on what's putting us down mentally and forgetting to do what makes us happy most. Unleash your creativity. Thanks, man, for the reminder. Happiness is free. And then, uh, he comes back to say, please, I am in. Let's express our way. So, <laughs> so Kola is in. Thank you so much, Kola is in. Kola is in with that. Yes, 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 yes. You have to express it in. And who again, Afia says, it's been very educated. Thank you so much, Afia, for also joining. And then who else is here? Let's bring it out. Let's bring it out before we close the session because it's been a wonderful session. Right, so are we ready for the hashtag for today? I think today we have a lot of hashtags. So we're going to pull it all together. We're going to give it all to you. <laughs> uh, Shelza, we have a lot of uh, hashtags. So let your hashtag come bring them in but before that oh very informative and educative from Marquesia. thank you so much right so we have two we have it here okay yeah we have two hashtags for today and i'm sure more are going to come so the first one is uh to learn and to end that's our first hashtag and our second hashtag is uh your own creative expression so we did a creative expression just as the founder has for hair foundation or how to hair organization with this creative expression. Yeah. And then Kola says, be happy. Keep the hashtags coming in. Keep the hashtags coming. And now don't go. We can't go. You just have to take just a little bit of tidbits from Cyber Bells and then we'll come back for Shelza to give us a closer remarks and then we are off for day. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, something that is happening. So this is tips from Cyberbills. We're taking some tips from Cyberbills. And today we are talking about this, bypassing two-factor authentication. Now, a lot of people keep calling and keep saying that my social media page, specifically WhatsApp, Facebook, or any other one, has been taken over by hackers. Some people have taken over my account, but I have implemented two-step or two-factor authentication. So how did it happen? Yes, a lot of people come in with these questions and they want to find out what happened before their account was taken. Yes, now this is how it's happened. You know, two-factor authentication is a second layer of security that you add up to your online account. So that's how it happens. So when you log into your online account and you input your password because you implemented two-factor authentication it sends a code to your assigned device meaning to your email address or your phone so you receive a text message and then you go ahead and then input that message or that code then you have access to your account now these bad guys or the hackers this is what they do before they want to take over those accounts of yours, your online account, they first try the brute force, try it, and then they will be prompted to input the code that has been sent to your device because you uh, implemented your two-factor authentication. And when they realize that they abort the process, now what they do is that once they are able to get your number, they call you or they send you a text message and these are some of the ways they send a text message, crafty ways. They go about this, it's this way. They say, you know what? Hello, I was a former user of this number that you are using, but I traveled for some time out of the country. And when I came back, I realized that my phone number or this SIM number has been assigned to you. But 
I implemented two-factor authentication on my email account, but I've forgotten my password. I'm trying to log into my account and I'm not being able to do that because it is keeping on sending a call to this, lamp, this number that you are using. Can you do me this favor? I'm going to try once again. And please, when the code is sent to your device, kindly send this code to me so that I can have access to my email account. You are a very good person. So you will just say, all right, go ahead, do it. When the code comes, I will send it to you. Then they go and say, thank you. Then they initiate the attack on your online account. The moment they do that, the code is going to be sent to your device because you've implemented two-factor authentication. Then because of the earlier conversation, this person asks, how do you feel? You quickly send or forward the code to them. That is when you give yourself up. That is the moment that you give full access control of your online account to this bad person. Then they come back to say, thank you, you are a lifesaver. And you say you're welcome. And that's the end of you having your access to that account, that online account. Then you take over. Yes, you have implemented two-factor authentication on it, but they are always finding a way to bypass and go around and get your account. So the next time you get those test messages, next time you get those emails, next time you get those conversations that they have changed their numbers, they were not in and whatever. Just tell them to contact their telco or their telecommunication provider so that they can rectify it with them. Because the moment you give out those codes, you have given assets to your online account today. Thank you very much. And I'll thank you so much. Do we have Selza around to give us her closing remarks? Yes, so Selza, do you have any closing remarks you want to give to us before we end this week? Thank you so much uh, to everyone, uh, and thank you so much for Benjamin. It's been a very, uh, you know, a very kind of a transparent, I must say, of who we are, and a very genuinely connecting to everybody. This is a kind of a free flow energy which Benjamin had already told me that uh, this is what he really he really creates that that it doesn't have to be planned. It has to be the way it is, like I said, our creative expression. This is what we are, who we are, and we embrace our uniqueness. So the tagline which I want to give is embrace your uniqueness. Right. right. <laughs> thank you. Embrace your uniqueness. Thank you so much. And as we always say, thank you so much for joining us. It has been a wonderful time. It has been a powerful insight into mental health and wellness. And we pick it from children point of view, attacking it at an early stage to help them, to help them work. So thank you so much. Embracing or embrace your uniqueness. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you everyone that joined, everyone that shared, everyone that liked. We want to say thank you so much. It has been a wonderful time. And as I always say, dreams are in levels. Make sure you get to the top level of your dream. So we'll meet next time, next week, same time on the same platform. It is goodness for me, Ambassador Benjamin Oswald. So we'll meet next week. Have a wonderful week and good night.